and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, freaks and geeks, who rules and derps alike, welcome, welcome all. I am Mullet Mike with the Freaky Paddle Gaming Network and Full Screen, bringing you Creepy Gaming. All right, so if you've been joining us this month, then you know we've been covering Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Well, because there was so much to talk about, I felt like I would leave this as its own separate episode. Because today, we will be talking about none other than Five Nights at Freddy's Halloween Edition DLC. And then we might also briefly talk about the upcoming FNAF world while we're at it. Alright, I don't really know what else to say. I guess without any further ado, let's turn the lights down and the volume up as we journey into some creepy game. <laughs> Now I should probably start out by saying the game's creator Scott Cawthon has went on record stating that the Halloween DLC is non-canon. So basically none of this changes or affects the game's lore. That being said, I just wanted to quickly point out the differences between the core game and its Halloween DLC. At first I was expecting some basic seasonal cosmetic changes, and that's what it is really, but I was thinking more along the lines of Angry Birds seasons. So needless to say, I was pleasantly surprised that besides cosmetic differences that there were actual changes to gameplay mechanics as well. The differences in this game are just flat out terrifying. I was already afraid of the animatronics from the original game, but the jack-o'-lantern versions are absolutely frightening. Jacko Bonnie and Jacko Chicka will be the first you encounter, just like night one of FNAF 4. So when I started night two, I was anticipating a Jacko Foxy. That would be a safe assumption, right? This is where one of the biggest differences occur. On night two, we begin hearing the eerily familiar sound of static. Could it be? No. Is it? <laughs> yep, it's Mangle. I've stated in the past how Mangle has always been one of the more frightening animatronics of the series, in my opinion. So, now we need a nightmare version! There, that's better. Not just that, but this probably explains why we've seen Mangle in the other room in the original version. Regardless if it's canon or not, it just makes sense. This is where we see a real difference in the gameplay. Like we've talked about, FNAF 4 is based around sound design. Some sounds can be ambient, but noises, breathing, and footsteps are essential to listen for. Now try listening to the other animatronics with this in the background. Another one of the bigger changes in the Halloween edition is when you begin Nightmare Night 7. You immediately hear the creepy sound of an all too familiar music box. I don't know what that sound is, but that can't be good. That's right. Rather than Nightmare, you must deal with the puppet. I should note, this is not the same smiling puppet that we've all grown to love, but of course a creepy 8 foot tall nightmare version! In the Halloween edition, he is referred to as Nightmarian A, which is obviously a mix of the words Nightmare and Marionette, which he was originally called according to the second game's files. Special thanks to staff member Nico Run from Deep Game Research for digging into these games for me. He's helped a lot with all of the FNAF episodes. That being said, Nightmare Night 7 Halloween Edition has to be by far one of the most difficult nights in either version of the game. Maybe it was just me, but I had some trouble with Nightmare in A. The Halloween Edition also features new cheats, new challenge modes such as Blindfold and Nightmare, nice additional features for it to be free downloadable content. The last difference I'd like to talk about is definitely one of the creepiest. In the original version of FNAF 4, we had a fun with plush trap minigame. Well, now we have fun with balloon. Yeah! 
That's not Balloon Boy! Oh, right, Nightmare Version. It's not like Balloon Boy wasn't creepy enough. It's not like any of the animatronics were creepy enough. I know! Let's make Nightmare Versions! All I have to say is holy shit. Nightmare Balloon Boy made me Shatner myself, okay? I'm shamelessly not afraid to admit it. Other than a few cosmetic changes in the Segway scenes, the rest is pretty much the same. Whether or not the game's differences are canon, it really doesn't matter. If anything, I appreciate Scott Cawthon for telling us it's non-canon right off the bat, rather than everyone going crazy and trying to figure out what it all means. Overall, I enjoyed the Halloween edition. The fact that it was free DLC didn't hurt either. Now, I wasn't originally going to talk about this, but since the first trailer has been released, I might as well touch on it briefly. FNAF World, or Five Nights at Freddy's World. I don't really know yet how the official title will be pronounced. As I've mentioned before in the previous episode, Scott Cawthon claims he is done with the Five Nights at Freddy's series, for now, and wanted to move on to something else. Well, kinda. After the initial release of FNAF 4, ScottGames.com released a commemorative thank you picture featuring the entire cast up until that point. Slowly as the months rolled on, certain characters began to get switched out with these cutesy cartoon versions. No one really knew what to make of it, until finally the new image was complete and thank you had been replaced with FNAF World. Now, since the trailer's release, it has been getting mixed responses. I feel like I'm one of the few who actually likes the new approach that's being taken. Scott has created all of these characters, and I guess he wants to move on from horror. For now. And I commend him for that. Do what makes you happy. This just being a teaser trailer, it should be noted that this footage is far from finished gameplay, so who knows, it might not even look anything like this when it comes out. Just from what I gather from the footage, it looks like some sort of turn-based RPG, just with FNAF characters. In a strange, nostalgic way, it almost reminds me of Super Mario RPG. It's a turn-based RPG with characters we've grown to love. I swear, I will find every excuse to show that clip. That being said, the Five Nights at Freddy's series has already done more than enough to make its way into creepy gaming history, but between FNAF World and Five Nights at Freddy's 4 Halloween Edition, it's definitely helped cement the game's legacy. Well, that wraps it up for Five Nights at Freddy's Halloween Edition, that wraps it up for FNAF World, but Join me next time in the Season 5 finale of Creepy Gaming when we discuss what everybody's all been waiting for. Five Nights at Freddy's, Secrets, Theories, and Easter Eggs. You're damn right. That's going to do it for me today, folks. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Hi, I'm Mother Mike with the on full screen saying, Stay creepy. Thanks for watching. Peace.